Welcome to Frankfurt. In this video, I'm going to show you what there is to do in this German powerhouse of a city, as well as some other places you need to visit that are just a train ride away, including Würzburg and the spa town of Bad Kissingen. Let's jump into it. Good morning and welcome to Frankfurt, Germany. I'm going to be here for the next week, traveling around this area of Germany, uncovering things that I find interesting in a part of Germany that I never thought about traveling before. It's mid-September and it's 30 degrees C right now, which is off to a good start. Now, one immediate fun fact is most of Germany's skyscrapers are situated here in Frankfurt. And you can see that if you just look behind me, they're all over the city, intermixed with all of the old buildings as well. So it is actually the financial hub of Germany. It's not a place that most people visit for tourism, but it's a great jumping off point for this part of Germany, which we're gonna discover later in this video and in more videos after that as well. There are definitely some interesting things to do here though. So let's get into it. So this is Romaberg Square, the heart of Frankfurt's old town, Oldstadt, apparently, as you say it in German. It was completely destroyed in 1944 due to World War II raids, but it has been rebuilt in the style that it was before. So it's beautifully German, and it also seems like a perfect spot for me to get some German food. So as you might expect, Frankfurt is home to the Frankfurter. And while some people dispute whether or not it originally started here, you can find them absolutely everywhere. I opted for the Rinswurst sausage, which looks like this, and I couldn't think of a better setting than with the square behind me. I ate it like this, no idea if that's exactly how you're meant to do it, but I just got it with a bit of bread and mustard. It was the perfect introduction to Frankfurt. So there you go, eating a Frankfurter in Frankfurt, tick, bucket list achieved. <laughs> then I went for a walk along the river, which was my favorite part of Frankfurt before heading on to Würzburg. It's just a quick one hour train away and then you're there in a beautiful new Franconian German city. Now this building has a huge significance for this part of Germany, but not everyone gets the chance to film inside. I had to get special permission from the German tourism board to be able to film here. I think it, we've got a guide to show us around, so I think it should be pretty interesting. Okay, so as you can see, I've had to get special permission to film in here, so I'm going to make the most of that. This is the grand staircase leading into the Würzburg residence, which is, I'm told, the main reason why it's got UNESCO heritage status. This was one of the first grand staircases ever built like this to allow ladies with their dresses when they're very large and flat and cumbersome at the time to be able to float up the stairs into the palace. So this is the this is America. Africa. Yes, Africa. Yeah, the detail in the faces are great. You can still really see it really clearly. So sometimes it's really great to have a guide because although there's so much detail up in this painting, it tells a story that I wouldn't know about unless I just had it explained to me. Each face is a different continent. And now for them at the time, they didn't know about Australia, they didn't consider Antarctica continents. They've got four walls and they've got four continents. You've got America, which is all wild and Native Americans living out in the wilderness. You've got Africa, emphasizing the trade routes of Africa, and then Asia. And they all point towards Europe, which of course is the center of the world at the time. Now clearly walking around this, it's a hugely impressive building with art and design absolutely everywhere. But there's actually a bit more of an interesting history here that my guide wanted to explain about. We met here on the Franconia fountain. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and can you remember, this is the, the big, um, the big vaulted ceiling and I have mentioned the rooftop was just yeah, completely still intact. Well yeah. yeah, and this is quite impressive because you see, what we can see here, 
it's already left here, it's, it's gone because mm -hmm. it's just completely burning and all the stuff was crushed up. So Würzburg was actually bombed and 90% of it was wiped out in March 1945. And of course, World War II finished in May 1945. In fact, even in April was when the white flags were flown and uh, yeah, that was, there was no real need for conflict here anymore. So why was it bombed? It wasn't really even a particularly military significant place, Würzburg. The reason it was bombed is apparently because they had to get rid of the bombs on the way back to landing. And so Würzburg was chosen as a destination to unload all of the incendiary bombs at least hit somewhere rather than crashing with the bombs still in the planes when they had to go and land their bombers which of course isn't a very satisfactory reason. Um, all of it has now been rebuilt since, but that's just part of history that that happened. It is amazing though that this has survived as much as it has, and a lot of it still is original, and uh, yeah, very worth seeing. I had no idea before I was being shown around about any of this, but really interesting to see. I'm now gonna go out and see more of Würzburg and show you why it's a place that a lot of people make the trek to. finishing up the tour right now on the old mine bridge and there's something other than it being beautiful with the fortress behind up there and this great view here there's something else that makes it really interesting which is the fact that they sell wine from a little hole in the wall shop and then you can sit on the edge with your glass of wine and take in the sunset. So I think if I get a chance, I'm gonna do that later. This whole region is big on the wine making, white wine specifically. And so I think that's a great time to cut towards trying some wine in Wurzburg. So I now have the Würzburg Weinkart, the wine card, which gives me five wines around Würzburg. I'm gonna, there's a voucher for each class of wine. I'm here with Lena. Hi. <laughs> and we're gonna go and explore Würzburg through the power of wine. Cheers. So we just stopped off for the first glass of wine. This is made with a Savannah Berry, which is one of the most famous from here, which this wine is made in Lena's hometown. So it's a good one for us to start with. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I'm a big white drinker. I prefer white to red. So this place is perfect because most, I think I was told earlier, 85% of the wines that are produced here are white. So as you can see, I've now collected my wine from the Brücken shop. This is it's a lot busier than it was earlier. Uh, now I have a glass of wine on the bridge and I'm ready for my Brücken shopping. Cheers. So, I was told earlier there are only two rules. One, do you know how to put it on the down like that, apparently? <laughs> oh yeah, <it's> <laughs> One I was told is you can't put it down on the edge of the bridge and you can't sit on the edge of the bridge. But besides that, you're good to enjoy your glass of wine on the old main bridge. That's it. <laughs> It was time to finish the night there because next up it was on to the spa town of Bad Kissingen. Now this little town has a great and interesting history and it's also home to possibly the world's most expensive water. I am now being introduced to where the healing waters come from. They rise up naturally from the ground and then have been used here for the last couple hundred years for the healing properties. The idea was, and I'm gonna learn a bit more about it later, that you take the healing water and then you have to move around a bit after to get the full effects of it. Which is why next door to the place where the water comes from, there is a concert hall. Now the music would play, people would move around, and I'm gonna to get to experience a bit of that later today. 
Now trying the healing waters of bad kissing gun is a, something that became hugely popular in the 19th century. People would flock from all over the world to try this naturally occurring sparkling water and pay up to 150,000 euros in today's equivalent. Tango is one of the most intense water we have. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and we start with the most intensive one and then it's getting better and better. For me. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> that's, for you. that's for me. Okay, so this is the panda. It's yeah. the first of my healing waters. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting aftertaste. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's mm. very salty, really yeah, but very salty. Um, strong and metallic. And this is the bitter vasa, yeah. which is apparently very, very salty. Yeah and can be used as a bit of a laxative, which is why I only have this much. <laughs> <laughs> as if I'm wine tasting. Mm. Oh yeah, that is um, very strong. It, it's like, yeah, I don't know, it's even like a sulfury taste. Or like, sulfury yeah. yeah, okay, it's good I only have a little bit of that. Ooh, it does taste medicinal. It's, it's the end of it that tastes like, I don't know, like um, medicine. So I've just tried five of the healing waters. I think you're actually only meant to be prescribed one normally, but as I'm just um, trying them out and making a video, I got to try them all. Uh, they all have their own individual laxative properties, so I'll be dealing with that in a minute. The idea initially was that after you had the healing water, you come out and move around, and because those waters are carbonated naturally, then by moving around, the CO2 goes around your body, and that was part of the healing. So that's really interesting in itself, and that's why, if you can see behind me there, there was a concert hall, and actually that, um, I'll show you in a sec, that stage spins around so you can have the concert either inside or outside. I'm hopefully gonna to get to see that later. Uh, but the reason is they would play music and then the old aristocracy, the people that had the healing water, then get to move around freely with music playing in the background and have the healing water fix all of their problems. It's an interesting idea and uh, it's something that I, I didn't really know about the 20th century, that they were that invested in their health and wellness, that they would pay, at the time, ridiculous sums of money to come here from all over the world and try some water that's going to fix them. Like hundreds of thousands of euros in today's equivalent to come here and drink healing water. I'm happy I just got to try it. <laughs> Maybe in relative terms, world's most expensive water, uh, but I just got to try it for free. And you can actually also come here and try any of them completely for free. There are natural springs all around this garden. You can just come and fill up a water bottle if you want, if you're ever in the area. Really interesting. I'm now waiting around because they still do the concerts here and that's my next stop to try out the concert in Bad Kissingen. Hear the classical music inside, by the way, but this stage also turns around. So in the summer, although it is summer right now, sometimes they play outside. That's actually a really nice way to finish. I just attended the concert here that they have twice a day and is part of the healing and rehab for people. I also just got told by the mayor himself, because that's what we do here at Life of Jord, we go deep, uh, that there are lots of rehab centers here and as part of the recovery, the people in those rehab centers, like rehabilitation for hip surgery, knee surgery, not like a Hollywood rehab center, but anyway, they come to the concerts as part of their recovery too, which is really nice. And it's interesting because we both agreed that how 
were they doing this 200 years ago and prescribing that sort of treatment? And then it's only come until now for us to realize that health and wellness is more than just medicinal. It also involves being outside, doing exercise, listening to classical music and drinking natural water. Very interesting, great way to finish this last little trip through Germany. We started in Frankfurt, head to Würzburg, and then now finishing in Bad Kissingen. A great few days, and it's just the beginning of my Germany adventure. So check back for the next video. It has been a lot more interesting than I expected, actually. I didn't know what I was gonna find here, but I've found the real gems, I think, places that apparently Germans know about but lots of other people outside Germany don't really know that much about. So there you go. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.